Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right hand corner, we have Aegis starting as the Red Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have Fisheye starting as the Blue Protoss. Very nice of them to choose these colors because the color swap, in fact, not working here. But this is going to be BSL Season 14, Hostile League, Round of 16, Group B, the final match of the losers bracket in Group B. I'm not sure if I said Group B already, maybe being a little bit redundant here. Redundancy, Department of Redundant. Ah. This is on Eclipse, which means this is the map everyone's played, everyone's seen all the sorts of shenanigans on. Usually I'd say this is where you'd expect just the heads up, just straight heads up play from both players. But it has been wild. First of all, Turbine, a little bit more of an unusual map. And in game one, we saw Aegis neglecting gas to go ahead and get a stronger economy early and, ended up, and then going for kind of a later bust that Fisheye wasn't prepared for. So we'll... Where I want to say, yeah, we're going to see a typical macro slugfest or typical, like, just standard play slugfest. I don't know what to say. The games have been wild today. Overlord meandering its way across the map. It looks like Fisheye has put a pylon down for the natural expansion. He is meandering this probe across, which might suggest we're going to see gateway play. But it looks like it is going to be a for usually a little bit far further forward when you're seeing the gateway. But it looks like we are going to see a forge first opener. Moving his probe along the southern edge. I don't know why that's the more popular thing to do. We are seeing an overpool from Aegis. We'll see if he opts to go ahead and go for the full Zergling spread or not. I feel like on a two-player map, you're almost obligated to for a variety of reasons. First of all, to deal with any probe annoyances at your natural expansion. Secondarily, you never know what's... Uh, I've, it's just the safer thing to do. It's the safer thing to do. Fisheye wandering into the main. Going to come across that probe. Both players just going to let that exchange happen. Going to walk across each other. Excuse me, excuse me. Very polite on both ends. We are seeing a larva save to get those six circlings out. You still can drop Nexus first versus this. Nexus cannon. And then just have probes alongside to go ahead and defend it. I think he's confirmed this. It looks like... So yeah, it's going to be, well, just two zerglings potentially. Waiting for the additional zerglings here. Nope. Just going to do the two zerglings. Natural Expansion was able to be planted without too much trouble. Fisheye going to wander up and see, still getting a little bit of damage against these drones being annoying. Is he going to get a kill? Go Battle Probe, go. Now the two Zerglings going to go ahead and frustrate that probe a little bit in its work of trying to annihilate this poor innocent drone. It's hard to pick out that drone in the grouping. Pro gamers, for whatever reason, just they have those laser eyes where they can just find that unit. Gateway online cannon warping in. Nexus should be there not too long behind this. Third base going up for Aegis. We'll see if he opts. This is a map where 973 is very, very strong. So if he so it's gonna be critical that Fisheye keeps this probe alive. Extractor being plopped down behind this. Fisheye gonna go ahead and grab his gas as well. So everything looking very standard. The Zergling wandering its way to the front. And drones being transferred just in time to the natural expansion. The Zergling, I don't know what it was thinking, but I missed the Zergling. I wish you could see the key, the kill count on the cannons occasionally. That actually would be a nice, fun addition of static building kill counts if Blizzard ever wanted to add something. And even, so the Zergling died right there, and we even got a little bit of bones for the corpse. How appropriate, although it looks like the bones, that Zergling had a lot of bones. Maybe not what, what was expected there. Again, Aegis pulling drones off gas. This time, I assume Fisheye is going to recognize and see it. He's got a cybernetic score up. And this is where I would, yeah, build Corsair and play from there. So now, a single drone going on gas. Which means, regardless, usually with this, regardless what that means, is we're going to see some form of Hydralisk play. And very likely not any sort of 973 attack. It looks like, yeah, drones being pumped here. Fisheye going to go ahead and wander up, find additional drones, and actually confirming the fourth hatchery. So very, very rapid fourth hatchery for Aegis. So Aegis, I think, wanting to go for a similar build order to game one. And actually, in this situation, I don't even know that the Stargate's necessary. Fisheye could have skipped that if he wanted to. But maybe just wanting to go ahead and potentially apply that Corsair pressure. Here should be able to confirm, again, only a single drone on gas. And at that stage, yeah, so the Zealot wandering up to the 12 o'clock location, Sunken Colony is going to be here. 
Might be able to get a drone. Only two Zerglings to try to defend it otherwise. So able to wipe out a Zergling and actually able to press through out of the range of the Sunken Colony. So the drones uh, able to draw it in, however. So wiped out without getting a drone kill, but was able to get two Zergling kills at the very least. Overlord confirming the Stargate build. Citadel of a Dune dropping to the south, as well as the gateway. Not sure whether that... I don't think that Overlord's in position yet to see that tech. It looks like it after... After confirming the Corsair, it's going to go ahead and wander out. Honestly, it's going to die anyway. I would just, like, move it in at this stage. Fifth Hatchery and a Hydral Sten at the Natural Expansion. Aegis now dropping the second Extractor to accelerate his gas flow. And an Evolution Chamber. So he wants to play maybe more of a macro upgrade game. Try to get ahead in the upgrades a little bit earlier. But... Yeah, I feel like Fisheye may be missing some opportunities in his build order. He could have skipped if he wanted to. These additional units maybe plop down a lot of gateways as part of the gateway flood behind this. He didn't need to produce as many zealots. But right now, he's sitting on kind of a three hidden gateway. He's got zealot leg speed upgrading. He's going to have plus one weapons. And unfortunately for him, it looks like he wants to go for that zealot leg speed plus one weapons timing. And it's just not going to be there. This 12 o'clock location is well sheltered up. There's going to be a lot of Hydralisks that Aegis is able to produce because he went lighter and really pressed his economy. And so I, I have a feeling he's just going to be able to be in a much strong, a very strong defensive posture, effectively, to deal with these Zealots once they're fielded. In a decent SimCity, you can just plop something additional down. I don't maybe another Evolution Chamber. One Overlord getting picked off right there. But the course... Corsair are going to have to deal with more Hydralisks that are grouping up, and actually they might even get picked off. One of them barely makes it out with 8 health, one more spit, acid spit in the air, and that would have been that. And so Fisheye actually needs to be very careful with moving these Zealots out, because he moves these Zealots out, if they peek in to one of these bases and get wiped out, he's going to be in another situation where he's, he potentially is going to have to deal with that counterattack. Looks like he has paused Corsair production, he's grabbing that Templar Archives. A fourth gateway. Zelt Lake Speed is going to come online as it's moving across. Plus one weapons is also going to come online as these Zelts are making their way across. But you can see there's a good bunching of Hydralisks here already. A good bunching of Hydralisks to the north. And they can crash down on these Zelts and potentially wipe them out. Especially if Fisheye over commits. So it looks like another Overlord might get taken out here. But this is kind of a very dangerous situation for Fisheye. So trying to press into this. The Zelts trying to make their way through. It looks like they are going to get wiped out. And now, yeah, the Corsair is wandering up looking for additional Overlord kills. Wandering into the natural expansion. These Hydralists are making their way down. Hydralist speed is not here, so that's at least one bonus. He's able to get in the natural expansion get some disruption done. But still working mostly on Hydralists. One drone kill right there. And actually, this might have uh, worked out, but both Corsair have been taken out. Looks like all of the Zelts are going to get wiped out. And again, Aegis is in a situation where, yeah, okay, this is this time Fisheye dropping cannons preventatively to make sure he isn't wiped out. Honestly, I don't feel like that attack did as much as Fisheye was hoping for, dropping a bunch of gateways behind this. Sidestorm being developed just to keep him alive at this stage. And Aegis behind that, you know, I'm just going to tack on an additional hatchery. Is very comfortable, can just pump a bunch of drones now. And I wouldn't be shocked to see him move out and maybe go for a contained situation as soon as Hydralis Speed is finished. So, and does he have a lair behind this? He does have a lair. It's going to be a while before Speed is there. I'm looking maybe for, it looks like the Zealots marching out once again. Wow, Fisheye playing very aggressive. Maybe if he pocketed these, I would feel better about this. But right now, I feel like those Zealots need to stay at home to have uh, some sort of sufficient defense. Some Hydralis moving across. This is going to be a more favorable exchange situation right here. And it looks like, yeah, now that they're, they're going to go ahead and back off. Now they're trying to make their way to that 12 o'clock base, potentially. Nope, they're just going to remain out in the field and aggressive. Huge amount of gateways for Fisheye. So he just wants to just run over Aegis in a minute or two. The worker count has evened. And so now Aegis might be in some trouble. Because Lurker Tech's still not upgraded. He's just going pure Hydralisk. He does have plus one weapons. He's got plus two weapons working as well, but he needs to start building an army because he otherwise he's just going to get run over. And he, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have eyes to confirm this. No Overlord, no, no Scourge. That's kind of as far as more modern builds 
Why Scourger also there is to go ahead and confirm what your opponent's doing. The High Templar marching in with this, and this could be devastating. Sidestorm catching a little bit of that Velvet line. But that natural expansion exposed. Sidestorm being dropped on the Hydralisks and being dropped on the drone, several of them being picked off. And now Fisheye wandering in. He's going to sacrifice these units to go ahead and get the damage done. More Sidestorm being dropped. More units flooding in. And Fisheye can continue just rallying troops to this situation. He's got double the supply. And using Sidestorm. And the Sim City against Aegis now. Morphing an Archon. I think that Archon's going to finish as well. Zealots reigning free, attacking this hatchery. I want to see them focus down that Hydralis then. To really put a cap in this. But certainly, a hatchery going to get taken out. You can see all of these units now marching their way across. And Aegis, yeah, not having enough army to respond to Fisheye's flood of units. Drones trying to make their way back across. It looks like they want to make their way to the 12 o'clock location, but several of them losing their lives for the effort. Double the supply count now for Fisheye. Zealots able to to reinforce and cut off and looks like deal with a couple of these workers now working on that hydral stand once this hydral stands down that should be gg a drone and some zealot or sorry dragoon and some zealots working on the drones in the main so it looks like that is going to get taken out so fisheye looks like he's done it there's gg from aegis and fisheye going to move to the final match here fortunately aegis a really fun player to watch in my opinion awesome dude around say hi to him if you see him in various switch chats he's going to be eliminated from this season wow what a nice visual with the closing the lightning and like the purple and blue lightning ball of flame right there nice visual to end on hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening